Perfect. Um, and one more, probably the most important thing is that we have a fun find it game during our virtual event where we have to find Ollie the octopus. And when you see him, he'll be kind of hidden. You need to make the international diving signal. Anybody else who's been here before, show them what the Ollie signal is. You know the Ollie signal, right? There you go. Octopus in the diving world. So be on the lookout for Ollie. And then Cindy, do you want to start the polls? Sure. So we're just going to do our regular poll to find out where people are coming from. Just have a couple questions here for everybody. So where are you joining from today? We won't be able to it see because we're logged in. You're in Washington State. What area? Working network. Have you been to one of our virtual youth events before? Feeling better. And what is your favorite whale? So those are the questions. There's a Langley side, right? We've got Langley and Freeland, and all right. We're representing Whidbey over here. We've got a lot of local. Yes, that's great. All right, we will give it a few more minutes. We have our family from Washington, D.C., who are always here. It's always great to see you guys. Welcome. <laughs> All right. We'll go ahead and end the poll. And it looks like we have somebody from California, somebody from the East Coast, our D.C. gang. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, we have our Whidbey Islanders. Our people have been to our youth events before, so welcome back. And favorite whale is orca or all of them. I have to agree with all of them. I get it there. <laughs> all right. Well, thank you for doing that. And is there anything else for announcements, Katie, or should I just go ahead and get going? I think you're all set. All right. Well, what I want to do, um, so this is our Welcome the Whales weekend, as some of you may know. And what we're doing is we're welcoming the gray whales back to Puget Sound. Uh, we're so lucky that we have gray whales that come here every year. They show up every spring, sometimes even before then. And we know them all as individuals. So it's kind of like seeing old friends that we haven't seen for a year. So that's what we're doing this weekend is we're welcoming the whales. We have a big festival and a parade. And so we are focusing on gray whales for our youth event as well. So what we're going to do today is talk about gray whales. So what I wanted to start out with, I know some of you um, have been with us before and you may have seen presentations on gray whales. So I thought we'd do just a little bit of gray whale trivia to see how much you remember or how much you already know, just for fun. And then we'll do um, a little presentation about gray whales and follow it up with a fun video. So I'm going to go ahead and launch another poll. And this is our gray, gray whale trivia. Cindy, I just realized we won't be able to see. So if you can just tell us the questions, we'll do our own. Thing. Oh, you know what? And um, that's a good point. Okay, so let me go ahead and launch this and I'll just read it off. Sounds good. Okay. All right, so the first question is, what shape is a gray whale's blow? Is it a mushroom, a heart, or a five-pointed star? And those of you on Zoom can go ahead and fill these in if you want to. And at the Langley Whale Center, I don't know how you want to do that, Katie, if you want to just let people think about it or have them raise their hand. We've got right answers over here. <laughs> All right. So the next question, and I'll go over them at the end. The next question is, how big do gray whales get? Do they get as big as a car, about the size of a mouse, or bigger than a school bus? Uh, you're killing it. <laughs> Next question. What is a gray whale's favorite food? Is it salmon, shrimp, or Rice Krispies treats? Oh, 
All right, we have two more. Uh, where do gray whales go to have their babies? Do they go to Mexico, Australia, or a gray whale hospital? Hospital. Mexico, what was the second choice? Australia or the gray whale hospital? I gave it away tonight. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And the last question, how can you tell gray whales apart? Is it by markings and spots on their backs, markings and spots on their tail flukes, or because they wear name tags? Okay. Those ones were wearing name tags. <laughs> All right, so I will end the poll and let you know the answers. I'm sure you guys got them all right. So what shape is a gray whale's glow? It is a heart shape. It's one of the things we love about them. How big do gray whales get? They actually get bigger than a school bus. A little bit bigger than the size of a mouse. What is a gray whale's favorite food? It is not indeed Rice Krispies treats, it is shrimp. Where do they go to have their babies? They go to Mexico. And how can you tell them apart? There are actually two correct answers there, markings and spots on their backs, as well as on their tail flukes. So good job, everybody. All right, well, that was just a little warm up. And what I'm going to do now is share my screen with just a short presentation about gray whales, and then we'll do the video. All right, so hopefully everybody can see that okay. Katie, just let me know if you can't. All right, so we'll just do a, a quick little presentation about gray whales, just kind of tell you the basics. Again, some of you may remember this from past youth events. So first of all, gray whales, we just talked about this, they can actually get bigger than a school bus. So in fact, if you look at like a medium sized school bus, gray whales can get to be about one and a half of those. So they can be 40 feet long and they can weigh 40 tons, which is 80,000 pounds. So they are, they're pretty big, but they're not actually the biggest whales. They're considered mid-sized whales because they're about half the size of the biggest whale. And do you all know what the biggest whale is? The blue whale. The blue whales can get twice as big as gray whales. And again, they have a heart-shaped blow, which we just talked about. So that is one of the things we love about them. When they blow, when they exhale, uh, it is in the shape of a heart. And different whale species have different shapes to their blow. So like, for example, the humpback whales have kind of more of a mushroom shape and sperm whales, their blow goes off to the side, off to the left side. So they're all just a little bit different and gray whales have a heart. Gray whales do make sounds. Uh, they're very different from the sounds that we hear from other types of whales. It's kind of a low rumbling call. And I'm going to play a couple of them for you. Hope you can hear them okay. Uh, they have one that some people think sounds a little bit like drums. And then they have another one that the scientists who report it, they say it sounds a little bit like a purr, which I think is kind of sweet. So here's, here's the purr sound. Let's play that one again. So hopefully you could hear those. If not, let me know. And then something else we, we just talked about in the trivia is how we tell them apart. And we can tell them apart by markings that they have on their back as well as on their tail flukes. So if you take a look at these two whales over here to the right, Lucifer and Patch, 
you can kind of see how they look a little bit different, right? Gray whales have a lot of spots. And so the pattern of the spots is going to be different on different individual whales. So we're going to play a, a little game here, who am I? What I'm going to do is put up a picture of a gray whale and looking at the pictures on the right, see if you can figure out who this whale is. So I'll put the picture up and then kind of give you a couple seconds to figure it out. Start it out with an easy one here. Hopefully this won't be too hard for you. All right, so if you guessed that this whale is Patch, you are correct, good job. He's named because he has a great big white patch here. He has another little white patch here, which could be a little bit confusing with Lucifer's little white patch, but this great big one gives it away. All right, so here's another one. So here are two other whales looking at the, the back. We have little patch, who has a little white patch. And then we have Gretchen. So who is this one? All right, and if you guessed little patch on this one, you are correct. So you can see his little patch right here and right here. So that's how the scientists do this. They take pictures of the whales and they go back and compare and they can figure out who they are. All right, we'll do one more on the back. This one might be a little bit harder. So we have two whales here, Stardust and Cascade. You can see they both have some, some white dots on them. So this one might be a little bit more challenging. So here's your picture. Give me a few more seconds on that one. All right, so if you're looking at this whale and you can see there are two patches right here. So if you're having a, a hard time with this one because these two look kind of similar, but you can see this one has a couple of big white <coughs> kind of blotches here. And so this is Stardust and that's actually how she got her name because it kind of looks like a star pattern. All right, so we're going to switch to the tail flukes now because we can tell them apart by their tails as well. So we have three tail flukes here belonging to Earhart, Dubnuck, and Patch. And you can see the patterns are all different from each other. So who is this whale? Take a few seconds to look through that, see if you can figure it out. All right, so if you guessed Earhart, you are correct. Good job. And I know Jill likes to identify Earhart because she has this nice little crescent or half circle right up here. So that's a really good way to identify her. Jill is very good at identifying gray whales. Uh, one other thing I love about Earhart is right in the middle of her tail flukes here, she has what looks like a little fox to me. You can see the great big bushy tail. There's a leg. And there's a little face. So it looks like, to me like she has a little fox in the middle of her tail flukes. All right, and this will be our last one. We have three more tail flukes here. We have Tahoma, Gretchen, and Cascade. And so who is this? This one might be a little challenging too. All these whales have lots of little spots on their tails. So you have to look at the pattern of the spots. All right, give you a few more seconds. If you're having a hard time with the spots, look at the shape of the tail flukes as well. Look at how kind of the tips are a little bit rounded here. A couple scars, see if that helps as well. All right, so if you guessed Cascade on this one, you are correct. Good job. 
So that one was a little bit more challenging, but hopefully some of you got it. Lots of little spots on all of them, but if you look at the pattern and you look at the tips of the tail flukes, that is Cascade. All right, great job. So the other thing that's really cool, we talked about this a little bit in the gray whale trivia, is gray whales migrate. So they actually go down to Mexico every winter. That's where they go to have their babies. But there's no food down there. So they're down there for a couple of months and they're not really eating during that time. They're not eating during the whole migration down there. They're not eating while they're there. So they're basically living on their blubber all winter long. So in the spring, they have to leave and go back to their feeding grounds. So they turn around and they go all the way back to the feeding grounds. And for some of them, um, this is the longest migration of any mammal. So some of them actually can travel 14,000 miles round trip. So 7,000 miles each way. And they have different places they go when they eat. Some of them are off the coast of Washington and Oregon and British Columbia. Some of them go all the way up to Alaska, all the way up here. And then of course, we also have the Sounders gray whales who come here to this area. So here are the feeding grounds. There are the Pacific Coast, again, Washington, Oregon, British Columbia. And then you've got some that are way up here, up in Alaska and Russia. And they're eating these little things called amphipods and shrimp. And the amphipods burrow way down into the mud. So the gray whales are actually filtering through the mud and eating those. And then we also, of course, have our Sounders gray whales who come here to Puget Sound. And that's what we're doing our welcome the whales for, to welcome them back. And when they're here in Puget Sound, they are eating ghost shrimp. So again, these are all things that are down in the mud. And that's what gray whales like to do. They turn on their side and they scoop up a mouthful of mud. So what do you think that this whale is doing? Is this whale stuck in the low tide? Is this whale eating or is this whale taking a nap? And what you've got here is the pectoral flipper kind of sticking up and there's the belly. So what do you think that whale is doing? And did everybody see our special Ollie friend? All right, so this whale is not stuck in the low tide. She is not taking a nap, she is actually eating. So that's what it looks like when they're filtering through the mud, eating those shrimp. So gray whales have baleen. Um, it's made out of keratin, same thing as your fingernails and your hair, and it hangs from their upper jaw and they filter feed with it. So again, they turn over on their side and filter through the mud. And when the tide goes out in this area, you can actually see kind of all these puddles here. Those are where the gray whales were eating. So they come in really, really close to shore at high tide. And then when the tide goes out, you can actually see all these puddles where they've been feeding. Now, something that's been going on with gray whales recently is something called an unusual mortality event. So we'll talk a little bit about how gray whales are doing. Um, they were almost extinct because people used to hunt them. So there was a lot of whaling that happened in the past and gray whales almost became extinct because of that, unfortunately. But once whaling stopped and gray whales were protected, they completely recovered and started doing much, much better after that. But right now they're going through something called an unusual mortality event. And we can just call it a UME because that's easier to say. But basically what it means is that a lot of them are starving. A lot of them are dying. And scientists aren't exactly sure what's going on, but they think maybe uh, it has to do with their food up in Alaska, that maybe global warming or climate change might be affecting their food and they're just not finding enough. So a lot of them have been starving. Now, the good news is that they are starting to do a little bit better. This has been going on for about the last four years. But this year, they are starting to do a little bit better. So that's great news. The other great news is that the Sounders gray whales, the one that come here to Puget Sound, they're actually doing pretty well overall. And what the scientists have found is that the ghost shrimp that they eat here is really, really important to them. 
So if you look at these pictures, these were actually taken from a drone. There are some scientists that fly over these whales with a little drone and they can take pictures to see how they look. And this picture on the left is one of our whales named Shackleton. And they took this picture of him in March of 2020 when he first showed up in the area. And then they took another picture of him about a month later. And in the first picture on the left, you can see he's kind of skinny there because he hadn't really eaten all winter. But if you go and look at the one on the right, he's kind of looking fat and chubby again. So just in a month, he had gotten pretty chubby with eating those ghost shrimp. So our Sounders gray whales are actually doing pretty well through this UME because they have ghost shrimp to eat. So that's something to be really happy about, uh, that they're doing pretty well. So how can we all help gray whales? Well, there's a lot of things that we can do to help. We can clean a beach because as you saw in that picture, they feed really close to shore. And so if there's garbage on the beach and it ends up out there in the mud, well, guess what's gonna happen? They're gonna end up swallowing it, right? So if we clean beaches and keep those areas clean, that can really help the gray whales. And again, we can clean up garbage so it doesn't end up on the beach in the first place. So even if you're in a park that's not near a beach, if there's a whole lot of rain or wind, all that garbage can end up on the beach. So if you're at a park or just anywhere and you see garbage, cleaning that up, putting it in the right garbage can can really help so it doesn't end up on a beach and in the stomach of a gray whale. And we can make sure we have less garbage by recycling and using less plastics, you know, having a reusable water bottle instead of a plastic water bottle, that type of thing. We can try to drive less so we were polluting less. So riding our bikes whenever we can, instead of getting a ride somewhere, that can really help too. Less pollution. And we can tell a friend what we know about these gray whales. A lot of people just don't realize that gray whales, you know, are having a little bit of trouble right now. And there are some things that we can do to help. And for those of you here in Puget Sound, in the Salish Sea, we can report whale sightings. Those are really, really important because when scientists know where the whales are, they can try to figure out where, the, where there are areas that are important for them for food. So if you see a whale, if you let us at Orca Network know, we can collect all of that information and we give that information to the scientists so they can help track the whales and find out where their important feeding areas are. All right, so thank you very much. And what we will do now, I will stop sharing my screen. And then I think Trevor is going to show our video. So this is kind of a virtual whale watch um, and it has some pictures and video from a couple of different places from Baja where the gray whales go to have their babies as well as from up here. And Jill, who is on our Zoom, um, she and her husband Clarence and I went out on their boat and we were able to get some footage of the gray whales. So you'll see that in there. And there's also some pictures and videos from Baja. So you'll, you'll kind of get to see both of those. And this video is also narrated by Katie's son. So I think Trevor is going to go ahead and show that. Yep, just give me one second. I'm working on getting that video up. No problem. And then once that's done, we'll see if anybody has any very well questions. Well, um, you should ask that question. I choose to look at the video. My name is Bubbles and I'm a gray whale cat. I was born in a place called Laguna San Ignacio, which is in Baja, Mexico. When I was born, I was pretty little. I was only 12 feet long and weighed 
1,200 pounds. But I have been growing fast and getting 50 pounds a day by drinking my mom's milk. You can tell gray whales apart by spots and markings, and I'm very easy to identify because I have a great big birthmark. Here in the lagoons, it's kind of like being in, in school sometimes because my mom has to teach me a lot of things like how to communicate and when to stay by her side, how to look for food when I get older, and how to get big and strong so I can migrate soon. But there's also a lot of time to play. I get to play with seaweed and mud. The dolphins in the lagoon, other baby gray whales, and even the people who come to visit us. My mom and I are the kind of gray whales called friendlies because we are really curious and we like to be around people. When we play around the boats, people get really excited and happy. They splash water on us and sometimes they even touch us. I think they love it as much as we do. Sometimes my mom even uses people as babysitters and she goes to take a nap while they play with me. When I am being friendly with people, I love to blow bubbles. Gray whales use bubbles to communicate with each other, but I also like to blow bubbles around people because it makes them smile and laugh. I know we can't stay here. My mom hasn't eaten anything for five months, and she's starting to get really hungry. So pretty soon, we'll leave on a long migration. We'll have to travel 5,000 miles all the way up to Alaska, where our feeding grounds are. It's going to be a long journey, and I'll probably get tired. There are some dangers on the way, too, like big ships and fishing nets and orcas. But my mom will be beside me the whole way, and she'll keep me safe. When we get there, she will show me where to find the food and how we turn our sides to scoop up mud and filter out the little amphipods and shrimp that live there. And we will eat all day long for months until it's time to come back here to Baja. Some gray whales won't go all the way to Alaska when they leave Mexico. Some will stop around Oregon, Washington, and British Columbia. And that's where they will stay and eat all summer. And my mom told me about a friend she met here at the lagoon named Earhart. She's a part of a really special group of whales called the Sounders. They get to go on a fun adventure every year and go to the Puget Sound. Earhart is really smart and she found a whole bunch of ghost shrimp in the Puget Sound. So she and about 20 other Sounder gray whales go there every spring to feast before they go to Alaska. Earhart and her best friend Shackleton have been going there for 33 years. And they have a lot of other friends they get to hang out with too, like Little Patch, Gretchen, Stardust, Cascade, and Lucifer. I asked my mom if we could go to Puget Sound too, but she said we have to hurry to Alaska so he, she can show me where to find food. And besides, this, the way the Sounders eat might be kind of scary for a little calf like me. They go into super shallow water close to the shore, turn on the sides, and filter through the mud to find ghost, the ghost shrimp. They have to be really careful and pay attention so they don't get stuck in the mud when the tide goes out. Earhart told my mom that people in Puget Sound love gray whales, and there's a fun place called Langley where they have a festival and parade every April to welcome the Sounders. That sounds really fun. Maybe when I grow up, 
Someday I can come to Puget Sound and be a Sounders gray whale too. Okay, I have to go now. I have some dolphins to play with and it's time to blow some more bubbles. Bye. All right, thank you, Trevor, for showing that. So let's see if anybody has any questions before we turn it over to Taylor, who's going to do the activity with you. Does anybody have any gray well questions? We had one question from in here, Cindy. Um, how do the sounders get their names? How do the sounders get their names? Is that, is that right? Yes. Excellent, that's a great question because some of them just got names. So some of them were named by the scientists who study them, and they named them for different reasons. So Earhart and Shackleton were named after scientists, um, and they Earhart and Shackleton were kind of explorers who discovered the ghost shrimp here, so that's why they named them after human explorers. Patch was named because he had a great big white patch on his side, so lots of different reasons. Um, but just within the last couple of weeks, a bunch of new sounders got names, and that was actually done through a vote. So Orca Network and Cascadia Research, the scientists who study them, actually kind of came up with some names for people to vote on, and then the public got to vote. And so that's where like Cascade and Tahoma uh, and some of the others got named that way. Great question. Anybody else have a question? If so, you can write it in chat or you can unmute if you want to. See, we might have a hand over here. Yeah, you. I'm asking them to unmute. Are you able to unmute that? Good. There you go. You're unmuted. How long does it take the babies to grow up? Oh, that's a really good question. How long does it take them to grow up? It takes them a, probably about three or four years or maybe even a little bit longer before they're full grown. But they don't stay with their mom that whole time. They actually stay with her for less than a year. So they drink their mom's milk for maybe seven or eight months, and then they're actually on their own but then they continue growing for at least a few more years, if not more than that. Good question. All right, we have one in chat. Um, how did the whales recover from being endangered? So the reason they were endangered was because people were hunting them. It was because of whaling. And so once whaling became illegal, once there were laws to protect them from that, they were able to come back pretty quickly once people stopped hunting them. That's another really good question. Does anybody else have any questions? Or for those of you on Zoom, if you were going to be in the Welcome the Whales parade, what would you want to dress up as? What would be your favorite sea creature that you would want to dress up as in the parade? And a queen, a queen in an We've got a queen jellyfish and an orca over here. All right. Anybody else want to share? You can write it in chat or unmute if you would like. Lily and Clara and Willa, what would you like to dress up as? A turtle. A turtle. Oh, that would be awesome. Um, I would like to dress up as an orca. As an orca. That would be great. All right. Does anybody have any other questions before we do the activity?
Well, I think before we start with the activity, I would love to see some of the costumes that were made at the Whale Center. Do you have any that you can share on the screen? Do you want to go get yours to first? Oh, here's your beautiful crown that she made. I'm going to show them that. You want us to show it for you? <laughs> so this is what, those of you on Zoom, this is what you'll be doing for your activity. Here, we've got a crown. Oh, look at that. It's a gray whale crown. Beautiful. Really fabulous wands being made, but some of them have already gone home. <laughs> well, we'll hopefully get to see them in the parade on Saturday. So yeah, absolutely. Really Do you want to show that one? <laughs> it's not quite done, she said. <laughs> oh, nice. Beautiful. Good job. Yay. Well, thanks everybody at the Whale Center for joining us. Yeah, thank you guys. Thanks, Cindy, for the great presentation and video. We're going to probably go continue working on our costumes. All right. And I'm going to turn it over to Taylor, who's going to talk us through the costumes on Zoom. All right. So, Everyone should have a piece of paper. Oop. Let's turn the blur off so you can actually see it. All right, so the paper should look something like this. And what I like to do when I'm using my paper and making my crowns is I like to do the coloring first and then I'd cut it out after. So you can take any of your favorite colors. So I'll choose a purple one. And you can just start to kind of go along with whatever color you like or markers or glitter to just sort of decorate the waves behind the whale and make it pretty however you'd like. See, so there's part of it. Did anybody already get yours and, and start coloring them? Yeah, do we all have our papers right now? Yes? Got some thumbs up. Great. All right, very good. So do you have any colors that you can use to start working on that so far? Maybe, yes. Okay, well, when you get your colors, you can start using those to make your waves on the background all pretty. And once you're done with that, you can get some scissors, but preferably some safe scissors that your parent can give you so that you don't actually accidentally hurt yourself. And we'll cut right along the bottom so you'll see where the waves will stop right along that line and you can cut them out so now you have all of that extra piece done you can move on to the top part. And if you want, you can try to cut around some of the swirls and the waves so that they will pop up. But if you don't want to, you can also just cut straight across just to make it easier too. And then when you're finished cutting out that first one, it should look something like this. And you're just going to repeat that with the other three whales also. 
Now, Cindy talked a little bit about the different gray whales that we have in the Puget Sound in the Salish Sea. So those could be Cascade or Thidwick or Tahoma. And you can choose any of those names to write down in this little box. So I think that I like the name Stardust a lot. So I'm going to take the Stardust name here and make sure that I can spell it right. And you'll just write that right on their little name tag. And now it will say, I am Sounders Gray Whale Stardust. And you can pick two other names for your other whales so that they can all have a name on your crown. And if you have any questions about whales or anything else in the Salish Sea, you can ask those while you're cutting or coloring too. And once you are done cutting or coloring, just let me know. You can either type it in the chat or you can unmute yourself and ask through the audio too. And then at that point, when we're all finished, I can show you how to tape it so that it can go around in a circle so that it can fit on your head.
I will put the names of the whales in the chat also, just in case you need a little refresher on what their names are. Yes. I would name my orca Celia. Celia, that's a beautiful name. I like that very much. Hazel. 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 That is also a very pretty name. Wow. And you have three whales each for your crown. So that'll be a lot of names. You're looking like you're doing pretty good so far. All right, so we've got some more gray whale names in the chat, just in case you wanted to use any of those ones. All right, how are our whales looking so far? Give it a couple more minutes until I can show you how to do the taping part. And you're definitely, oh, wow. Okay, so a little bit of that whale. That one looks very pretty.
All right, and you can raise your hand or just unmute yourself whenever you guys are done cutting, and then I can show you how to do the taping portion. All right, so for taping them together, you are going to end up having your three different whales. And what you're going to want to do is get three pieces of tape for your three different whales. Place one piece of tape on the side of it right here so that you can end up attaching them both together. And then they'll be stuck like this. You can use that second piece of tape for your third wheel. And then with those two pieces of tape, you should be able to have them all in a line just like this. Then for making it into a crown, you're going to bring it into a circle and use that last piece of tape to fasten it together so you've got a circle. Then when you're all finished, it should look something like this. You can wear it on your head like a whale crown and it'll have all of your whales names on them too. would be great. And then when you go out, you can show off all of your different whales and their personalized name tags. Are there any questions or anyone who needs any help before we wrap up? Does anybody have a finished crown you want to show us? Are you still working on them? You can send us pictures of them later if you want to. From the little bits I did see, it seems like they are looking very good so far. And another thing, if the crown ends up being a little bit too big for your head, you can always make it smaller by just wrapping it a little tighter and you can overlap that a bit there. And then it'll be a smaller circle that should fit on top of your head a little better. See? So that one's a little bit too small for my head, but it might work for yours. Does anyone have any more questions or need any help with it before we end off? Or if you finished it and you want to be able to show it. I did see some very cool names for your whales, so it'd be very fun to see them all finished up and colored.
All right, Cindy, do you have anything you wanted to share with everyone before we finish up? I don't think so. Thank you so much for doing that, Taylor. That was a great activity. Hope you guys all enjoyed it. And we would love to see your whale crown. So if you get a chance and want to take a picture of it and would like to send it to us, we would love to see it. So feel free to do that. Thanks, everybody, for joining us. Think about us this weekend as we welcome the gray whales. And put some use in your whale crowns. Wear them around the house, wear them to school, whatever you'd like. <laughs> Yay.